Well, right now, a stalemate threatening Indiana's budget. Democrats have fled to Illinois, refusing to show up for work. Uh, their boycott derailing some key bills, including potentially the state budget. Indiana is facing a projected budget gap of $3.6 billion. And for a different take on this, joining us now, Indiana Congressman Mike Pence. So, Congressman, just so our viewers Thank know, uh, great to have you back with us again. I know you've been mulling a run for the governorship of Indiana, and I was curious if you made any more decisions on that before we get started. Well, Jenna, uh, after a brief stop in Washington today, we've been spending all of uh, this week traveling across the state of Indiana. We're seriously considering uh, running for governor in 2012, but our focus right now is on doing everything we can across the street here in Congress to get spending under control and to get this economy moving again. And that's where we're going to stay focused. I thought it was worth a shot just for an announcement. You never know what you're going to get with a question like that, Congressman. <laughs> nice try. Just a, just a quick, uh, quick follow up on what's happening in Indiana. And then I definitely yeah. want to talk about the budget. Are we witnessing democracy functioning? Or are we actually seeing the breakdown of our democratic system with, with politicians fleeing the state and just compromise really nowhere to be seen? Well, let me tell you, wh whether it's uh, Wisconsin or whether it's uh, the state of Indiana, I, I think it's a disappointment to, to millions of Hoosiers and millions of Americans to see legislators walking away from their assigned duties. Uh, I, I've been very careful not to involve myself in decisions that are being made at the Indiana General Assembly, and I, I won't now. But I, I do believe that those of us that are elected to serve as legislators, either, either here in Washington or in Indianapolis or in Madison, Wisconsin, have an obligation to do our job. And I want to urge my Democrat colleagues to return to Indiana, to return to the General Assembly and do what the voters gave them the privilege to do, and that is debate the issues and cast their votes according to the dictates of their conscience. Now onto that national topic about the budget that uh, obviously passed the House, but it's, it, there's a question about what's going to happen to it in the Senate. Can you give us some right. insight about what's happening behind the scenes? How are you working to forge some sort of compromise uh, with your colleagues in the House, but also in the Senate to, to prevent a, a government shutdown here? Well, let me say first, I'm very proud that House Republicans kept our word to the American people. We found uh, more than $100 billion in savings, just like we said we would, uh, from the president's uh, last budget. Uh, and we sent that legislation uh, with significant budget cuts over uh, to the Senate. We expect Republicans in the Senate uh, to support those tough cuts uh, as, a, as a down payment on fiscal responsibility. But uh, the Democratic leadership in the Senate uh, has made it clear that uh, they're not going that far. But uh, everybody in, in, among House Republicans, from Speaker John Boehner on down, uh, are all sending a very clear message uh, that, that we are prepared to dig in and fight for real spending cuts in exchange for passing a resolution to fund the government the rest of this year. Prepared to dig in and fight. I just want to pause there for a second because we've talked a lot about civility after the November election and, of course, after Tucson yeah. and approaching politics in a new way this year. And many of the budget cuts that were passed, most of them, in fact, were passed with the Republican majority and, and sometimes no Democrats voting yes on it. A few were, but most not. So how do you think this new civility is, is really working in Washington right now? Is it even there? Well, you know, I really think it is. You just saw you saw the Congress last week for the first time consider a budget bill under a wide open amendment process. There were more than 90 hours of debates, hundreds of amendments, and anyone that looked in saw that 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 Congress was allowed to work its will on a broad range of issues. I, I was able to pass an amendment uh, with bipartisan support that denied all public funding to Planned Parenthood of America. There were other amendments, uh, some of which were supported by leadership, some of which weren't, that passed and failed. Uh, I, I think what we saw was a vigorous, open, and very civil debate last week, and that's what you're going to see going forward. But beyond civility, you know, the American people really want us to step up and make the tough decisions to put our nation back on a pathway toward fiscal solvency. Uh, you know, a trillion and a half dollar deficit this year alone, the Senate ought to be able at least to accept $100 billion in savings as a down payment on fiscal responsibility, and we're going to fight for it. Do you think that fight is worth the government shutdown? Well, look, I, I, I'm not here to advocate or not advocate a government shutdown. What I, what I think Republicans have to be willing to do, though, is say to our colleagues in the Senate and communicate to the American people that, that we have stepped up, we've kept our word, we've demonstrated the ability to begin to make the hard choices to put our fiscal house in order, and we need the American people to come alongside us and demand that our Democrat colleagues in the Senate 
and this administration do the same. Congressman Pence, thanks for taking a break from your break uh, to join us here today. And we look forward to talking to you again and maybe getting that announcement on our air. You never know. <laughs> I'm holding out, Congressman. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jen. Congressman